frustrated, when you sit stuck in long lines of traffic for as far as the eye can see. Every day, our roads are clogged, our cities are noisy, and our emissions continue to climb as people try to get from A to B. So how can we change this story? We need to change the focus away from how we can get there the fastest and instead concentrate our energy on how we can get there more safely, more sustainably, and more enjoyably. My name is Oliver Manius, and I'm here today to help motivate and empower you to make choices that change the world, simply by altering your transport habits. I've been interested in transport planning ever since I was six years old, when I created a model city in my room called Oliverland. <laughs> I used to rely on cars as my main mode of transport for the tiny city. Back then, I didn't have many toy cars, so this worked well. So as I started adding more cars to the city, I noticed that the streets were getting clogged with traffic. Now, I tried many things because I used to love cars, but then I realized that a whole new approach was going to be needed to tackle the problem. That is when I came across and put into practice sustainable transport options of public and active transport. Now, I'm sure you all know what public transport is, but what about active transport? Well, it's any physical activity that gets you from A to B like walking, running, jogging, scootering, cycling, and even rollerblading. After recognizing improvements in Oliverland, I looked hard at the real world. This led me to begin studying urban and regional planning so I could get a glimpse about how these options can work in real urban environments and to understand what the challenges are in getting there. So, what are our biggest challenges? Cluttered roadways, unacceptable emissions and air quality, environmental degradation, transport inequality, dangerous walking and cycling environments, and compromised road safety. So how can we change that story? In my 12th grade at Hillbrook School, I created the position of Road Safety Ninja, to help keep students at my school safe. So I was out there most days in my high-vis jacket, making sure students were crossing at the right place and looking both ways before crossing the busy road. It was a rewarding duty filled with high responsibility. As I continued this role throughout the year, helping students cross the busy stream of fast-moving traffic, I realized something. For my position to exist, we must be doing something wrong. Why have we created a transport network so heavily reliant on cars that causes so much danger and contributes to the planet's environmental problems? Instead of thinking about it in a detached way, we need to think about what part we might play in the problem. To do this, Let's think about ourselves as part of that traffic jam, rather than seeing it as an external problem. You might have already been thinking about reducing your transport emissions, but not knowing where to start. Well, I'm here to help. I invite you to journey with me to discover how you can get from A to B, often in less time and in a more sustainable way. I believe public and active transport is the answer, not just in Oliverland, but in the real world. Let's first look at the benefits that public transport can bring. According to TransLink, bus, train, ferry, and tram travel significantly reduces reliance on fossil fuels, making it at least twice as energy efficient as private cars. In fact, one full bus 
can take more than 50 cars off the road. And one full train can take more than 600 cars off the road. Fewer cars means less congestion and the scaling back of carbon emissions. So what can we do as a society to make this dream a reality? Well, we need to work with our governments, local, state and federal, to provide dedicated transport infrastructure that can cope with growing demand. This could be in the form of interconnected busways, tramways, railways, that are not limited by private motor vehicle congestion. The more separated transport corridors we have and the more people use them, we will see a noticeable reduction in congestion on our roads. It's a win-win for commuters and the planet. And this leaves our roads freer for the people who really need them, those who are not able to use public and active transport. There are other benefits too. Do you ever get spare time on a busy work day? <laughs> well, if you switch to public transport, you'll suddenly have all this time to read, catch up on work, or with friends on social media. Our potential solutions don't stop there. It's time for us to become active. Do you ever get time to exercise on a busy work day? <laughs> well, if you're able to switch to walking or cycling, you'll suddenly be able to fulfill your daily quota of exercise in your daily commute and no longer have to go to the gym. <laughs> it's a win-win for commuters and the planet. The state of Queensland's Department of Transport and Main Roads tells us that from an environmental perspective, cycling five kilometers to and from work each day could save about 720 kilograms of CO2 emissions per year. Moreover, cycling is a very efficient mode of transport when you have the appropriate infrastructure, such as separated bikeways, shared paths, bicycle lanes, bike cracks, and useful things like bicycle repair stations. Just in case you didn't know, these are some of the different types of bike racks there are. So look out for them next time you're out and about and see if you can use these for a trip you'd normally make by car. I also invite you to see if your place of work has bike racks so you can make the trip by bicycle instead of car. And let's not forget the importance of walking. It is often overlooked as a transport mode, yet it is one of the most sustainable transport and requires minimal expenditure from governments to construct footpaths and pedestrian crossings compared to the expenditure on roads. And let's not forget micromobility devices, such as electric scooters, providing the luxury of on-demand transport while providing much-needed space-saving technology. The more we use sustainable transport options of public and active transport and commit to reducing our car dependence, the less space we'll need in our cities for roads and car parks, and the more space we'll have for community-focused, people-centric design. An example of how this could look is a one-way street turned into a pedestrian mall in my model city. A place where people can walk, play, scooter, cycle safely without the dangers of cars. I believe this would significantly improve our quality of life. Now, I'm not advocating to eradicate cars, I'm suggesting we use them more responsibly, like carpooling, or only when we really need them. This, for example, if you're getting bread from the local shop, consider walking or cycling instead. And if you're going further afield, consider your options of taking the train or coach and enjoy the feeling that you're making a difference. So, 
before you grab your car keys, simply ask yourself, can I get there by bus or bike? Or can I walk there? We must never underestimate the difference we as individuals can make on the world. Our choice to switch to sustainable transport options of public and active transport can start a trend. And from that trend, a movement begins. And from that movement, a global change can happen. So when you get home or finish streaming this video, I invite you to use a mapping service to look up your local bicycle or bus routes and see if you can use these transport options for a trip you'd normally make by car. And if your local public and active transport infrastructure needs improvement, try contacting your local council member to make it happen. We can say goodbye to those long lines of traffic if we work together. All we need for this lifestyle to be a reality is for all of you and me. All of you listening now, whether you may be here at Hillbrook School or streaming this video online, if at all possible, make the change for a better future. And let's see what difference we can make simply by altering our method of transport and hopefully enjoying ourselves along the way. Bye for now. And I hope to see you again in a sustainable world.